Today, I'm going to take you on a very, very quick introduction to using AI automations. So if you haven't done any yet, this is a great place to start. We're using make.com and I'm going to show you how to create an email autoresponder. Now, what it does is it takes a in every email that you get, it checks it to see if it's about a specific topic. If it's not about that topic, you ignore it and it leaves it to you to handle. But if it is, then it will create a draft for you based on whatever you tell it to do. And then you just have to click send, assuming that you approve that draft. First thing that we need to do is set up this Microsoft 365 email outlook. And in this case, we want to watch messages. We're going to watch all the messages and we're going to watch the inbox or the, the incoming uh, folder here. Um, so actually go ahead and put that on inbox. So anything that gets into your inbox, we're going to not have any search terms. You can, I mean, you might be able to filter down a little bit more with that, but we don't need it here because basically the filter that we put on here is going to do that for us. We're going to limit it just for the sake of this video to one. Uh, you'd probably want to make it a lot higher if we run it on a cycle, like maybe whatever you normally get in a day and then click OK. Now I should uh, note, we'll say from now on here, if you uh, are doing this for the first time at make.com, you'll have to go up here and click add and then you'll create a new connection, click save, and that will ask you for your credentials into your Microsoft 365 email. So this will give credentials to that email address that you're going to be using. All right, the next piece here, we're going to add an OpenAI piece. Now OpenAI, in this case, we're going to do a chat completion and we're going to use this in a slightly different way than normal. Again, you'll have to click add here. Now, in order for this to work, you will need to have a subscription to ChatGPT and then you'll also have to open up the API subscription for that as well. So um, when you have those two things, what's going to happen is you're going to put add and then you'll put in here your API key. So if you don't know how to do that, I'll add a link in the, the description below that shows you how to do that piece. And you'll you'll have this information from your OpenAI dashboard. All right, so you're going to do a chat completion. We're going to use a model and we'll just use uh, GPT-4 in this case, and it's going to load that model for us. And now we're going to choose uh, messages. So the first message that we want, and this is almost always the case when you're working with uh, an AI assistant like this, is we're going to do a system message. And this sets the context. You can think about it like um, it's, it's helping the AI know what vocabulary and what phrases that it should be using. So in this case, we'll say, I'm going to copy and paste it. You're a helpful assistant who analyzes the content of email addresses and determines if there's a specific type. Okay, and then we're going to add the other message and let's set a little bit more context here. So we're going to pretend that you have uh, a bunch of emails coming in about a hydroelectric dam project. Now it could be anything, whatever you would want it to be, um, but we'll we'll start with this. So maybe you're a uh, you know a government official, or maybe this is an engineering firm, and this is the kind of so this is anything that has to do with this. You want to make an automatic reply for. So we'll say analyze the following email message and determine if it's related to the hydroelectric dam project. And then you're going to put subject. And now what this is doing is it's taking we're, we're giving we're basically injecting the data that came from the email into the prompt that we're giving to ChatGPT in this case. So now we need to go through here and find the subject of the email. It's up here. So you can use any of these pieces of data and we're going to put it right here. So when that actually gets run, that's going to use the subject of the email there. And then we're going to put body, which is the body of the email. And in this case, we'll use content. OK, and that should be enough here. We'll um, click OK. So now what we are doing is we'll receive an email. We will then check 
the contents of that email and we'll see um, whether it's related to it or not. And then um, we're just going to basically have it say yes or no. That's all it's doing. So now we're going to do another one. And there's a, several ways we could do this. But we're going to actually have two uh, ChatGPT or OpenAI modules here. What we want to do here is the first one did the analysis. So now we're going to have a chunk of text that says, yes, it's about it, or no, it's not. And then we want to do this one called text transform text to structured data. What that's going to allow us to do is it's going to use kind of the wisdom of ChatGPT again. Um, but this time, it's going to put it into a structure that we can then use later for filtering and doing other things with. This is a really key first step to understanding how to use AI in automated workflows. So we're going to use here, we'll use the ChatGPT Mini. Uh, this is mostly just because uh, this isn't very complex. Maybe we could have used that on the previous one too. And then we're going to say text to parse. And we're going to use choices. And then we're going to use message content. OK, so we're going to parse what came out of this previous one. And then the prompt is we're going to simply tell it if uh, we'll say if message content is related to the hydroelectric dam project, mark true, otherwise mark false. And then this is the key here. We need to add a data definition. Come in here. This is the structured data. And we'll call this one project related or dam project related, something like that. And then the description is going to be, OK, and we probably don't have to say Boolean here, but uh, it's a Boolean, or we'll say a, a decision, a Boolean decision declaring whether the message content is related to the hydroelectric dam project. So the word Boolean just means true or false. And it's just a programming term. So we're now saying, if it's related to this damn project, make it true, otherwise false. So we're taking this whole message content. And in these two steps, we're analyzing it and then condensing it down to a single variable that we can use in a filter to decide whether we want to make a response or not. OK, and in this case, we do want this parameter to be required. So we'll say OK. And we're actually almost done. The last piece here is that we want to now compose, but not send an email. And this is something when you are doing AI related work, you want to be careful to really think about whether you want AI to take the action or you just want AI to do all the legwork and then you take the action, you make the decision. So we could use create and send a message. Um, if you're very confident that this is a low risk, if, if it, AI makes any mistakes, you could definitely do that. Um, but in this case, we're going to do create a draft message. And that's, again, you'll have to use that, reuse that connection that you had. And you'll probably have to add a few more permissions to it if this is your first time doing it. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to draft the email, but we're not going to send it. And then you can review all the drafts and then say it's the beginning of your workday. You come in, you have, say, 20 emails related to this. Well, you have drafts. You just go one by one, click send, 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 and just double check it. Maybe you do that for a week and you feel confident to change this into create and send instead of just draft. So we'll say, um, thanks for reaching out on the hydroelectric dam project. And then the content here is going to be, you need to make it in HTML. So I'm going to grab, uh, I have this copied elsewhere. I'll put this in here. And we're going to, in the HTML, make this response. Now, you don't have to know how to write HTML. You can just go into ChatGPT or some other chatbot like that. And you just take the content that you want and then say, make an HTML formatted email that looks nice with good white space. And you'll get something like this. You'll notice that it used the from email address name. Okay, so that's that's whatever they call themselves over here. And then we're going to go down in the 
two recipients and we're going to add the email address here. Okay, so we have a name and an address. You got to use the actual address. These are uh, include everything below. So you can't just, it might look like you just grab this email address and drag it over, but that won't work. You actually have to grab the lowest one because you see it has a text. So it's of type text. Up here, it's of type collection. So you'd be getting all of this data, which you wouldn't want and it wouldn't work. Now in the name, then you're going to go back again and you'll say name. Okay. And you could add whatever you want here. If you wanted to, uh, you know, a next step that I would be taking if I was doing this in a real world scenario is I would also add a step here with ChatGPT that would compose an email based on a template. So I would write a template and I would say, if this is the opinion, so I would maybe analyze the opinion of the person. Are they for it? Are they against it? Um, because that is going to really determine what I respond with. And so then you can have a very you know helpful response. But in this case, what I'm doing is I'm just saying, hey, could you take a quick uh, survey for me? And then I give them a Google Forms link, and then they can go in and they can get their feedback put into my system. So these, these last steps are always dependent on what you're doing. And this is why custom automations are so great. There's with SaaS, they're always trying to guess what you might need to do. Um, but when you're doing custom automations, you can do whatever your actual business needs are. So we've got that ready and now we'll click OK. We now have the full process in place. And so all we have to do now is compose an email to the email address that we did. And then we'll check and see if a draft was written for it. For my Gmail, I'm now writing this angry email to my uh, Outlook here. And so this is going to be received by the one that we set the automation up for. And we're going to say, hey, what are you thinking? This damn project is a terrible idea. I can't believe you're thinking about supporting it. Sam, then I am going to send that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to watch that come through just the regular email channel, of course. Um, but what's important is we're going to see a, a response be written for it. So right now it's it's unread and there's a, there's no draft on it. So over here, make sure you save, by the way, if you haven't done that, we're going to say run once. Now, when you run this in production, you want to uh, set this on some kind of schedule, maybe daily, uh, maybe every six hours, something like that. And now we're going to click run once. And so it's going to go through. It's going to check everything and it sent it successfully. So let's just see really quick. This is the output of this is the data that came through. So this damn project is a terrible idea. I can't believe we're going to think about supporting it. OK, great. Then we got up here and we say result. Yes, it is related to this project. OK, and then over here we have it say project related true. OK, and then the final piece is um, it sent a, or it created a draft for this message. So let's come back over here and let's see what we've got. So you notice my drafts just went up to seven. Let me look at that. And here it says, thanks for reaching out on the hydroelectric dam project. As you can imagine, we're getting a lot of queries. Would you be willing to take a quick survey? Now, this is in my draft, so all I have to go through, go in is, go in there and then I can just click to send it. So that is the uh, the whole process. But we need to add a filter now. We need to ask ourselves what would happen if we had an unrelated email. So we want to make sure that no draft is generated for that. So let me address that really quick as well. Hey, really quick, can I just ask you if you're enjoying this video, if you're finding it helpful, could you click like on this video? That'll help me get the content out to more people and make more videos like this. If you're really liking it, could you consider clicking subscribe next, which will also help me get more videos to you and help this channel to grow. Thank you so much and back to the video content. Now let's send another email and this one is to the same email address and it says your tax is cheaper. So it's a marketing email from someone about taxes. In this case, it has nothing to do with the project. It'd be really uh, wasteful to create a draft because we'd have to go back and delete that. And it would be really embarrassing if we actually sent that. So before I send this, I want to fix this piece here. So we need to add here 
a filter. All right, and this filter is going to ask ourselves, is it project related? Is project related? And the condition is, you notice this one, we, we made ourselves this really nice project related, and we can tell it was true on the last run. True. And then down here, we just have to say equal to true. This is important that it's lowercase because um, it's going to match kind of like in a, a programming way. So it has to be lowercase. And you can see here it was lowercase as well. So now we're going to say OK. And now we're going to send this email that we had just a moment ago. OK, so it's sent. And then we'll go see in our inbox. So it should show up in our inbox here. And then we're going to run this, um, this automation. And it should not generate a draft. So right now our draft is at 7, and it should stay at 7. So we got your text is cheaper. So we're going to come in here. We're going to run the automation. It's going to find one. It's going to find this. And then you're going to notice down here it says 0, and it never triggered this. So it's going to say here, this email is not related, okay? which caused this guy to say that project related is false, which meant that no items matched true here. And so we didn't create a draft. And you can see the drafts is still at 7, uh, like it was when this came through. And there you have it, an end-to-end -end email autoresponder up to draft state. This is how AI automations work. You, you have to take the data, which in our case is an email, but in many cases it's going to be coming in as a spreadsheet or something like that, or maybe just a single row of data. You feed that into AI, and then you have AI make a decision about it, or maybe compose something. And then you need to have, if you're doing a decision-related thing like this, should we respond or not, then you need to have some kind of mechanism to take that AI decision and turn it into something that a computer can act on, like a computer variable in this case. So we had the, um, the project-related variable. If you can get that under your belt, you'll be able to do all kinds of AI automations for your business.